Hello, my name is Anne-Marie Mora and I'm the Communication and Stakeholder Manager at SKIRT. SKIRT stands for Stronger Christchurch Infrastructure Rebuild Team. We are the team responsible for repairing the earthquake damaged water, wastewater, stormwater pipes, as well as roads, numerous bridges and retaining walls across the city. Now, as you can imagine, this is a huge task and communicating what we are doing to the people of Christchurch is really important to us. We want to make sure the information is as accessible as possible and that's why we are making this presentation available online. We want you to have an opportunity to consider this information at a time that's convenient for you. So you can watch this as many times as you need to or skip to the bits that may not interest you. And you can also look at the information on our website. If your property is going to be connected to one of these pressure wastewater systems, you will be contacted by SKIRT directly and given lots more information and also an opportunity to ask as many questions as you like. In the meantime, I'll ask our technical experts to describe the what, why and where of this pressure wastewater system. My name's Duncan Gibb and I'm the General Manager of SKIRT. As an organisation, SKIRT exists to create resilient infrastructure that gives people security and confidence in the future of Christchurch. The original wastewater networks were not constructed to stand up to earthquake conditions. The result was that they were damaged and couldn't operate and in some instances created a public health risk. SKIRT is here to rebuild these networks so that they will survive future earthquakes. This will make sure that the community will not have to live with the conditions that they experienced after February and September. We are building a resilient network which means we need to use different solutions in different areas. One of these solutions is a pressure wastewater system which we will now explain to you. Hi, my name's Chris Mance and I work for SKIRT. I'm currently working with design engineers looking at the rebuild works for the wastewater underground pipes. I thought I'd start with this diagram here, just to show typical damage that's occurred across the city. We've got damage to the roads, and you can see we've got damage to the underground pipes. The blue pipes are water mains we're replacing with modern materials that are a lot stronger. The green pipes are the stormwater network. They collect the rainwater from the roads and also from our rooftops. They've been damaged, but not too badly, and they're being repaired where the damage has been found. The wastewater network, on the, on, on, the, on the other hand, the orange pipes, these have been so badly damaged where whole networks are no longer viable, and we need to look at alternatives. A little bit of background to the wastewater network. Some of the pipes go back 100 years. They're made from brittle earthenware materials and unreinforced concrete. Even some of the newer asbestos cement and PVC pipes have also been damaged. Here you can see some sediment building up because the pipes don't slope as they used to. They have dips in them and this sort of material builds up and stops the sewer pipes from working. Why is this damage being caused? Well, there's been a lot of ground movement. There's been a lot of liquefaction and lateral spread. And, some of, and the age and the condition of the existing water, water, wastewater pipes didn't help in some areas. There's a high prob probability of future earthquakes causing damage to the gravity system and some areas need to be built in a different way. It was really after February that the council decided to look at alternative wastewater networks. And we came up with four, four strategies. There was using the existing gravity system, but with an additional number of pump stations. We are also considering now a vacuum system. This requires a central vacuum station to operate. And then we have the pressure wastewater, which I'm going to particularly talk about today, where we have an individual pressure pump on each property. There are combinations of the above as well. Each of the systems have their own advantages and disadvantages. The gravity network is low to maintain. It has some operational flexibility. That's when it's working. But it doesn't have that high resilience to future earthquakes. Putting it back in the ground is really expensive and difficult, as you can see with some of the earth, um, engineering works going on in the streets. It's a lengthy process and disruptive to the community. It's expensive to repair in future seismic events, and that's a concern we also have. 
We have the vacuum systems. They're a little bit more complex. They're a bit hard to maintain. The construction costs are not too bad. And there's an added resilience in future earthquakes. But they don't suit every need. They're best suited to large catchments where the ground conditions aren't too bad. They're more technically challenging to operate as well. Then we have the pressure wastewater system. These are the same sort of thing in terms of maintenance costs. But they have small shallow pipes. They're easier to put in the ground and they're easier to fix. We believe pressure wastewater has the highest resilience to future earthquakes. Now there are disadvantages as with any scheme. These pumps require power to operate. The tanks need to be installed on private property. We know this is challenging for everyone. Now there is a selection process and that really is looking at various factors from cost to future resilience to the ground conditions, etc. And when we consider all of those things together, and that's the cost to put it in the ground, the cost to maintain it into the future, and the resilience the system provides us in the particular ground conditions that we're working, we come up with, with the re recommended solution for particular areas. Where pressure wastewater has been chosen, we consider that to be the most resilient solution for these areas, and also the lowest whole of life cost. In these areas where pressure wastewater has been recommended, no alternative system is being considered. So a little bit of um, background to the, way the pressure wastewater system, call it the big picture. And I think I'll show these, draw your attention to these three pictures down below. This is essentially what you'll see once the construction crew have been through and installed the tank in your property. All you get to see is the lid, tucked away somewhere with your agreement. And after a while, when the shrubs have taken a little bit of time to grow back, these things can begin to blend into your garden. Now it's not new technology, not for New Zealand, and even some parts of Christchurch have had these tanks installed in the past where they were unable to gravity straight out to the street. Now we're not just looking to put one or two of these in for, for some areas, about 6,000 have been considered across the whole rebuild. We've already installed a few in Brooklands, in Avondale, Hallswell, Richmond and South Shore. And some larger systems are planned for parts of Hay, Richmond, Shirley, Parklands, Wollstone, New Brighton and South Shore, and skirts engaging and actively talking to residents in these areas. We've already installed about 100 of these systems across the city. What is an a pressure wastewater system? Well, an individual tank needs to be located on private property. And there's a pump inside that tank which pumps the sewage and wastewater away from your property. The pressure system is going to be installed at no cost to the property owner. And the system is going to be owned and maintained by Christchurch City Council. Christchurch City Council's maintenance contractor, City Care, will be responsible for maintaining your pump. And should there be a fault, you can call them and they'll come out straight away to fix the problem. The pump does need to be connected to the house's power supply. And this needs to be paid by the landowner at present, estimated at about $30 per year. Now here are a couple of diagrams just to show the difference between the existing wastewater system here on the left and the proposed pressure wastewater system here on the right. Here you can see a gravity lateral that goes out to the gravity main deep down underground. These pipes have been damaged, quite badly damaged in some areas, and this junction here is particularly vulnerable. What we're looking to do is bring that line of responsibility as close to the property as possible. This tank will be owned and operated by the Christchurch City Council. So the property owner will be only responsible for this short section of lateral. From this tank, the pump pumps through small diameter, strong, resilient polyethylene pipe to discharge quite some distance downstream from your property. You can see here an alarm panel which has a connection to the tank. If for some reason there is a fault in the pump or for whatever reason the tank starts to fill excessively with water, an alarm will go off and you will be able to call the, con um, the Christchurch City Council's maintenance contractor to deal with the problem. Here's one of those tanks and one of the control panel that I was talking about. This is about two meters tall but it's completely buried underground. And here's the tank lid which is all you get to see from the surface. The pump inside can be easily switched around if there is a problem and this is controlled and connected to the alarm panel which has a visual which is a flashing light alarm and an audio alarm which can be switched off by clicking a switch underneath the panel should it go off. This is a typical installation in Christchurch where we have the lid shown here in amongst some bark and the shrubs. And in the corner over there, by that downpipe, we have the alarm panel. This is all located in agreement with yourself. We don't come in and decide where this is going, but we get your agreement before we start any work on your property. 
Some key points with regards to the system. The pump's quiet. It only operates for very short periods of time. You may be able to hear a slight hum, but only if you're standing right beside it. There's no smell from this pump. It flushes the tank regularly. If there is a power cut, the tank has quite a bit of storage in it, over 24 hours. And we generally use less water in the power cut anyway. Our washing machines and dishwashers don't work. Should the power cut be longer, the council could come along and empty the tank with a sucker truck or by connecting up a generator to the pump itself. You can turn off the alarm by pushing the button underneath should it go off. And then you would call the Christchurch call center and the maintenance contractor would come out and fix the problem. Generally that would involve them pulling out the old pump and putting a new one in and taking the old pump back from repair. They don't do any repair work on your site. The other thing of note is that the bolt lid is bolted down securely to prevent access by children. You can also landscape around the tank and blend it into your garden. This is typically what the system looks like once it's been installed and I've got a typical diagram of our property here and this dotted line here is what we call the existing private lateral. We want to intercept that lateral as close to the property as possible to get rid of any damage that there may be in this pipe here. Here you can see the tank installed and then the small diameter strong polyethylene pipes that go out to the boundary. Prior to installing the tank and connecting it up, an electrician will need to get access to your power switchboard and bring a power cord through to that control panel and the alarm panel and from there there's a power cable buried underground to the tank. The system installation will be carried out in agreement with yourselves. We'll, dis we'll agree with you where that, where that tank should be located. The installation time varies from two to three days to possibly as long as a week. A small excavator would likely be used to dig the hole for the tank and as I mentioned, an electrician would be required to access the electrical switchboard to connect up the power. There may be a minor disruption to the service when we switch from your current system over to the new pump, but I suspect you won't even notice that. Here's some pictures showing a typical installation. There the tank's been dug, or the hole's been dug and the tank's put in it. Perhaps some small connecting pipe work will need to be laid, and here you can see some electricians working on the switchboard. As I mentioned to you, the, 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 the tank and the switchboard are owned and operated by the council. We will maintain this for you and we'll provide you with some instructions on what to do in the event that the alarm goes off. Our co maintenance contractors is now trained up in, in repairing and maintaining these tanks. And should there be a problem, they will be at your property before that tank flood um, causes any inconvenience to you. So in order to hook up to this system, we need to locate a buried tank on your property. And of course, to do this, we do need your approval. SCIRT is committed to providing you with the best information that we can so that you can make an informed decision. If your property is receiving a pressure wastewater system, you'll be notified directly. You'll be invited to an information session where you can hear a presentation just like this one from the experts involved in designing and implementing this system. And of course you'll also have a, qu a chance to ask lots of questions. You'll also receive a detailed information pack. This has all of the information about pressure wastewater systems, the installation process and the consent forms. If you have any questions at all we encourage you to give us a call because we do understand that for most people this is a new system and they may have many questions to ask. Our team will also visit every property that is receiving this system and will talk to you about where is the best location on your property for the underground tank. And of course, before we start any work at all, we'll send you out a start work notice. This will outline what to expect during construction including traffic management, access to your property, hours of work, and whether the work will impact on any of your services. Now you can object to this system being installed on your property. In doing this, you're essentially opting out of the city's wastewater system. So if you choose to do this, you would then be responsible for managing the wastewater on your property. We have a lot more detailed information about the objection process and this is something that we can talk through with you if you would like.
If your property is going to be connected to one of these pressure wastewater systems, you'll be contacted directly by one of Skirt's five delivery teams. They will step you through everything you need to know about the system. Chances are that even after listening to this presentation, you may still have some questions, because after all, rebuilding the city's infrastructure can be complicated. If you do have questions, please feel free to get in touch with the Skirt delivery team that's implementing the system in your area. They will have written to you directly about this. Remember though, that not all areas of the city are having a pressure wastewater system installed. If you haven't heard from Skirt, this may be because your area will have a different wastewater system. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation and we hope it has clarified things for you. The presentation is available online on our website or also as a DVD. Please do contact us if you'd like a copy.